It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change your attitude, change your life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life brings you interviews with some of the most inspirational and influential people in the world. It's our goal to educate and empower you so you can live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. We have another great show for you today. Every day, most people consume food products made of wheat. And as a result, many experience some form of adverse health effect. According to today's guest, Dr. William Davis, the food we eat is making us sick and the agencies that are providing us with guidelines on what to eat are giving dangerous advice with devastating health consequences. Dr. Davis believes that wheat is the single largest contributor to the obesity epidemic and that the elimination of wheat is key to dramatic weight loss and optimal health. Dr. Davis is a cardiologist who in his book, Wheat Belly, debunked the myths behind a grain heavy diet. He is here today to explain why he believes wheat is making us sick and to offer an action plan so we can clear our plates of this seemingly benign ingredient. Dr. Davis is the co-founder of Curality.com, an online program for heart health. He advocates for a healthy lifestyle in which foods made from wheat are removed. Welcome, Dr. Davis. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks for inviting me, Joan. Doctor, I think people are very confused today because for years, we were told to switch from white bread to whole grain because wheat was good for us. Then we do that, and now we're told that wheat is causing many health problems. But as we're learning, the wheat of today is not the wheat of our parents or grandparents, which probably was good for us. So what has happened to wheat that's on the market that causes you to refer to it as Franken wheat? <laughs> well, actually, wheat and other grains have always been problems for humans. So it's not just the new stuff. What agribusiness and geneticists did was make it much worse. Mm -hmm. And we have to get away from this idea that gluten is the only source of problems. Gluten is indeed a problem, but it's only a, it's, there's so much more. There's so many other components in wheat and other grains that cause problems, such as the gliadin protein, which is a component of gluten, but gliadin is the protein responsible for triggering autoimmune diseases. You know, we're living during an epidemic of autoimmune diseases where the body's mm -hmm. immune system attacks uh, its various organs like your liver or pancreas or, or, or the uh, uh, cells that produce insulin that produce that, that yield uh, type 1 diabetes in kids or that uh, attack the thyroid and give you Hashimoto's thyroiditis. 8 to 13 percent of all people in North America now have one if not several autoimmune diseases. A lot of this is from the change introduced into the gliadin protein. Gliadin also is broken down to opiates that stimulate appetite very powerfully. And so people who consume grains, whether it's white or brown, makes no difference. That's a fiction. Stimulates appetite. So I call wheat a uh, perfect obesogen. It is the food that is perfectly crafted to make you gain weight. Well, you know, doctor, because you're, you're saying other grains, and I'm a great example. Here I thought that I was doing everything right. I made some really good dietary changes and I eliminated wheat and but you know I switched over to sprouted grains and brown rice and that's now from what you're saying not so good so what is it that we're talking about what should we be eliminating from our diet all grains the truth of, the truth of it is Joan all grains are very promiscuous because they're grasses they come from grasses uh, so grains are nothing more than the seeds of grasses. And grasses, are, they're everywhere. They're ubiquitous all over the world, over the earth, and they mate with each other. So that's why wheat, for instance, has almost like the identical genetics to rye. Rye has been the weed in wheat fields for many years, and they shared genetics. So grains share a lot of genetic patterns. So for instance, that gliadin protein I told you about, mm -hmm. that's responsible for, for triggering autoimmune diseases and also can act as an opiate on the human brain when it's partially digested. Uh, there's a protein like it called zein in corn. So people say corn is gluten-free. Well, it is gluten-free, but it's got a closely related protein called zein that overlaps in effect 
with the gliadin protein, including causing uh, autoimmune diseases. And that's why in experimental models, you can give a, a mouse type 1 diabetes by feeding it corn. So it, the problem comes with all forms of grains, not just wheat. Though I, I picked on wheat the first in the first book, Joan, because mm -hmm. it's the worst of the worst. It's the one that's been changed the most by agribusiness and by genetics research and has the, the worst effects on humans who consume it. So, Doctor, I can, I mean, I know it's going through my head. So I can hear people right now screaming because we're so addicted. So <laughs> what should our diet be looking like? If you want to have bread or pizza, is there you, anything we can do? You make a get? crucial point. You make a very crucial point, Joan. It's an addiction. It right. is an opiate addiction. And it drives appetite. It drives obsessive behavior. It drives addictive relationships with food. And so that's why people with ten a tendency towards bulimia and binge eating disorder, for instance, have 24-hour day food obsessions mm -hmm. from eating, uh, getting the proteins that derive from that gliadin protein. So if we don't eat grains, there's lots of foods to eat. There's real foods, of course, like eggs and meats and vegetables and, and salads and nuts. There's mm -hmm. plenty of other foods. Now, here's, here's a lesson I learned many years ago, though. People still say, though, but I've got holidays. I've got kids. I've got grandkids. I've got a fussy spouse. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to entertain. And so what I've done also is show people how to recreate familiar fun foods like pizza or muffins or cookies or cheesecake using healthy ingredients. No wheat, no other grains, and by the way, no gluten-free junk. Mm -hmm. So the 99% of stuff sold in supermarkets called gluten-free is, is garbage. It's absolute garbage. It's, it's there for profit, not for health. It ruins people's health, in fact, because there are other problems with those things. Also, no sugar. We don't add any sugar to our recipes. We use benign, healthy ingredients. You know what that means, Ho-Chung? It means you've converted pizza into a healthy food. It mm -hmm. means you convert cheesecake into a healthy... It's so healthy, I have one of my cookbooks, for instance, I have a recipe, recipe for breakfast cheesecake. It's cheesecake for breakfast. Because mm. <laughs> all the problems have been taken out. I so think there's, I'm there's, sold. There's many, there's, there's many good foods remaining, but there may be some accommodations that are new baking ingredients. Now, doctor, as a cardiologist, do you believe that there's a link between eating wheat and heart disease? Absolutely. That's how I stumbled on this, Joan. Uh, the number one cause for heart disease in the U.S. is not high cholesterol. That's a kind of a, a kindergarten fiction that makes $20 billion a year for the drug industry. That's a, mm -hmm. that's, that's a germ of truth in that, nothing more. The most common cause, most powerful cause for heart disease, heart attack, need for stents, bypass, all that stuff, is an excess of small LDL particles. That's the real cause. Those little particles last for seven days rather than 24 hours, like large LDL particles. They're much more prone to oxidation. They're much more adherent to the walls of arteries. So small LDL particles are the cause for heart disease. There are other causes too, but this is a, ma a major cause. Right. There are only two foods that provoke formation of small LDL particles, grains and sugars. That's it, Joan. So. When, so I, I wanted to give my patients better tools to get control of their heart disease. We took all wheat and grains out because of that, because all these people with heart disease have small LDL particles. Take wheat and grains out and sugar, and small LDL plummets. It doesn't go down 10% or 30%. It goes down 100% or close to that, 90%. Huge drops. And in, in concert with that, the HDL cholesterol, the good value, goes up. Triglycerides come down. Blood sugar comes down, hemoglobin A1C comes down, blood pressure comes down, C-reactive protein, a measure of inflammation, comes down, people lose weight, their acid reflux goes away in 90%, symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome disappear within the first five days in 90% of people, joint pain, particularly in the, in the arms, wrists, and fingers, is gone within the first week. So many other health benefits, but it all started with this effort to give people a better tool to gain control over heart disease risk. Doctor, we're a, a society of take a pill and, and mask a situation. In your opinion, do you think by just doing what you said, we could eliminate so many drugs that people are taking? Absolutely. A huge amount of health care is devoted to treating the consequences of grain consumption. People often don't see it that way because they don't realize that cataracts can be a disease of grains. They don't realize that migraines it can be a disease of grains. They don't realize that depression and the mania of bipolar illness, paranoia of schizophrenia, 
They don't understand that uh, skin rash like eczema, seborrhea, and psoriasis can be from grains, or that rheumatoid arthritis is from grains, or heart diseases from grains, or hypertension. So many diseases people don't realize are from consuming grains, and you don't you understand it once you get rid of the grains, and these conditions go away. Now there are steps to take in the after you remove wheat and grains. Just like I, I'm, the the comparison I draw is if you're an alcoholic and you stop drinking two fifths of bourbon on Tuesday, are you in perfect health by Thursday? Of course not. So once you take away the dis- incredibly disruptive effects of modern wheat and grains, there are steps to take simple, easy steps to take to recover health. If you do that you recover astounding health and you stack the odds in favor, for instance, of not having ulcerative colitis or acid reflux or rheumatoid arthritis or heart disease or hypertension. And those are all detailed in the weekly programs as well. You know, to me, doctor, it just makes so much sense to start with our food in healing than to to look outside to something that's being manufactured. Absolutely, Joan. Diet is incredibly powerful. The problem is Conventional diets are awful. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The diet, for instance, to cut your fat, cut your cholesterol, cut your saturated fat, eat more healthy whole grains, as offered by the American Heart Association, American uh, Diabetes Association, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, (laughs) all agree you should follow that routine, which causes an astounding amount of obesity and disease. So we don't do that. What we do is we eat no grains, absolutely no grains. We don't add sugar. We don't limit fat. We don't mm-hmm. limit saturated fat. We buy fatty cuts of meat and eat the fat. Mm-hmm. Probably organic and free range, of course. But eat the eggs, eat the yolks, eat, use more olive oil, use coconut oil, rich in saturated fats. Don't worry about the fat and astounding things happen, including uh, more fat makes you thin that satiates people. And all the other things improve in, in, in its wake, like blood pressure comes down and triglycerides come down and cholesterol values come down and, and skin rashes recede. So part of this equation is do not limit your fat. We hear so much about the glycemic index, but you say that that's a fairy tale. Why? Well, the, no, the idea of glycemic index is, is fine, but they break it down into categories of high glycemic index, medium and low, which are very, very arbitrary. So a uh, Food with high glycemic index raises blood sugar to very high levels. Uh, Food with a low glycemic index raises blood sugar to a little bit less high levels. In other words, it really should be called high glycemic index, a little less high, and a little (laughs) less high. So the only true safe glycemic index is single digits or zero. So glycemic index is is largely a fairy tale. But people will say things like, eat foods with a low glycemic index. What they're telling you to do is eat foods that raise blood sugar to high levels. They're just not as high as high glycemic index foods. Uh For instance, oatmeal, a grain, thereby shares the same carbohydrate of other grains called amylopectin A. A bowl of organic oatmeal, no added sugar, raises blood sugar sky high. If you're non-diabetic, 150 to 180 is typical. If you're a type 2 diabetic, controlled, a blood sugar 250 to 500 is typical after a bowl of oatmeal. Oatmeal is horrible. Hmm. Yes, it has some good things in it, like the beta-glucan fiber. But all in all, it is very destructive for health because it's a grain. And it has that amylopectin A carbohydrate that is rapidly and very efficiently digested. Most components of grains, by the way, are indigestible, but the amylopectin A of grains is the exception, and that explains why grains have among the highest of glycemic indexes. The book is Wheat Belly by Dr. William Davis. If you would like to learn more about this topic or Dr. Davis and his work, you can visit wheatbellyblog.com. Dr. Davis, in our final moments, what's the takeaway? What do you want to leave our listeners with? Just be aware of this issue, this question, that has nothing to do with the gluten-free message. I get criticized for saying, wheat belly is just about being gluten-free. It is not. It's about being grain-free and avoiding gluten-free foods. Uh, If people are skeptical, just want to know, give it a try for four weeks. Your listeners should know, because there's an opiate in wheat, you will have a first week of misery, because that's an opiate withdrawal syndrome. Nausea, headache, depression, fatigue, it lasts about a week, but then you come out of it feeling spectacular, and you'll start to understand what these effects mean. Dr. Davis, thank you so much for being here and for talking about a serious problem that is plaguing so many people today. If you see yourself in anything we've discussed, or if you'd like to learn more, you can visit WheatBellyBlog.com. Again, Dr. Thank you. Well, thank you, Joan. We'll be right back. 
Hi, this is Joan Herman, host of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Did you know that Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life has a free monthly digital magazine that can be read online or emailed to your inbox? Every month, nationally recognized leaders in their field provide information to educate, inspire, and motivate you. We believe in a holistic approach to life, incorporating mind, body, and spirit. Check out a copy of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life 24-7. Visit CYACYL.com and be sure to tell your friends. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided are the opinions of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read the digital magazine, and be sure to follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.